Okay, I'm going to start off because um, I have 20 minutes. It's a split session. Um, so everybody can hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, good. So I'm going to give you a quick heads up on the Splash Awards initiative and the stuff that we've been doing with the Splash Awards for the past year or so. Uh, me and the team behind the Splash Awards, um, we started organizing the International Splash Awards, which happens tonight with a small group of volunteers. Uh, and we decided to uh, to take on that it's time to take on the brand as well. And we're going to show you what we did. Um, just uh, a, a quick recap of what the Splash Awards is about. <clears throat> the Splash Awards was initially um, conceived to celebrate the best Drupal projects there are um, initially locally. Now it's organized in ten different countries, and also to bring on bring in the clients into the open source community that we are. Uh, the community that they are part of, but most of the time they don't know that they are. So we wanted very much to bring clients on stage as well. Um, and now the Splash Awards is being organized in countries all over the world, right? So 10 countries in Europe, but also the International Splash Awards, the one in Seattle in April, and now we have another one tonight. Um, that's great, with over 13 countries submitting 70 cases, all about celebrating the wonderful work and we have some wonderful cases that have come in uh, on the International Splash Awards tonight that we've seen come by. So that's amazing, and that's what we set out to do. So that goal is achieved from day one. Uh, but there are some challenges that we've faced over the past year. Um, most importantly, the inconsistencies in layout and design that we had, and messaging and format for the Splash Awards. Uh, the different ways that they were categorized, different rule sets and methods for um, <clears throat> determining winners and such, which, if that happens, dilutes the Splash Awards in a sense, and you have stronger cases in one region than you have in others. So that, that's challenges that we faced as well that we wanted to fix when we started organizing the International Splash Awards um, during DrupalCon uh, this week. And obviously there's different formats um, in the sense that we started out with a black tie format, but you cannot maintain that if you want to include as many people as you can. So that's another challenge that we faced, that we were faced with. <laughs> um, so initiatives to promote Drupal are vital to maintain a strong market, marketing position, market position for Drupal and enduring success. So we need that consistent brand. We need to repeat that message. Right, so what you have with awards like the Webby and the Lovi is that their actual clients say, "Hey, we're we're getting the submission ready for the for the Lovies or the Webby awards, which are, are quite famous. Um, we're not there yet with the Splash Awards, obviously, but you know now that we have a consistent message and a brand, we can start building up that image, uh, hopefully in you know Drupal clients and organizations using Drupal, not just with us, right? So that's very important." Um, the slides are going to be shared, so there's stuff that I'm sharing, which is in the URLs, which you can pick up afterwards. So besides organizing the International Splash Awards tonight, we set ourselves some objectives in de defining uh, a consistent and inclusive brand. So we wanted to make sure that whatever we come up with is going to be usable in all the different regions and countries that are willing and, and ready to organize the Splash Awards and flexible to adapt, um, being able uh, for every one of you that is willing to organize one in your own region to add stuff to it, but um, the core uh, elements of the brand obviously are branding guidelines, colors, typography, photography, and so forth. So that's, that's something that we've created, um, and it's very cool that we have that now. And we also looked at the guidelines um, for, for submitting Splash Awards, both regional and international, um, because there were some challenges there. So how do we go about cases that are already submitted? How do we go about cases that are already won? Obviously share whatever we come up with. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. That's been happening online. That's on SplashAwards.org. Uh, and I'm going to show you where to find that in a bit and also um, offer means for you to contribute. So, obviously, we had some help from the outside, um, and we hired a professional that helped us create the new brand for the Splash Awards. And she had, like, a questionnaire for us in order to brief her properly, and this is one of the questions. Um, this 
it's like three pages, so this is just a bit of it. But she asked us um, what keywords we would use to describe the splash awards. So these are the keywords that we came up with, which I think uh, resonate with most of us. When we think of the splash awards in terms of open source, in terms of sharing, inclusiveness, and so forth. So <clears throat> this is a process that we've been going through. This is an example of the, the um, style study that we went through, and I, I'm just showing you this to make you understand and let you know that we went through a professional process and wanted to be um, um, as flexible and as inclusive as we could, and also had like a, um, a relative, a relatively large group of people around the world that we tested and sent stuff over to and said, hey, will this work for your region? What do you think about it? Here you see the keywords that we uh, offered in our briefing, um, linking towards different styles that we, that we uh, studied and examined. A color palette matching the, um, the stuff that we wanted to, well, to resonate with the Splash Awards. Um, <clears throat> obviously the typography, all laid out in the brand book, and this has become the logo that we've been using and it's going to be here for us for at least the next five years. The new Splash Awards logo. Um, obviously, we went ahead and researched if this would touch any other symbolism or cultural beliefs or whatever is out there um, to make sure that we don't have any conflicts or clashes. And there's actually a rationale behind the logo because there's obviously the drop making the splash and then tying it all together forming a crown, which is also a little homage to the previous logo that we had, but the Splash Awards being an award, right, should be like really something with stature. So that's what we've tried to, to accomplish, but also not be too posh and too big, because that's not, that's not what we are. We tested how that works on different visuals um, and put that in the brand book. Say, hey, if you're, if you're using it, uh, these are the colors and this is the way you do it. Uh, this is the overlay that you used. And as we, as we love stickers so much, obviously the badges were very important to us. <laughs> so we're going to have them uh, in stickers tonight, but they're also digitally if you enter the Splash Awards. Um, if you are a nominee or maybe a winner tonight, you can use these. Uh, put it in your cases online or physically. These are the certificates that we hand out to um, uh, all the nominees and runner-ups and winners. So we want everyone to go home with proof of what they've accomplished. So we tried to work this out. This is all laid out in a brand book ready for you to use. I actually have 88 of them framed in my car, driving them to the Splash Awards in an hour. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we worked out the visuals, how to use them. Um, these are all templated in Sketch and Photoshop and whatever tools um, to use and change for you. And this is something that has not been realized, but that we would very much like to order. Um, there was it was too short notice this time, but this is the cool stuff. Obviously, that you can make, uh, you can do with that. So, the, um, that out of the way, then. Um, this is the Bluetooth logo, right? Everybody knows that. So, um, what's this logo? Anybody knows that? Starbucks. Just what's, what's that? Starbucks. Starbucks, right? Yeah. So it's very important to you know to maintain that level of recognition that we've that we've tried so hard to uh, to establish. So we've also, or, you know, the expert professional that we hired, to find some stuff not to do with the logo. You know, and it's very tempting to uh, put that little flag in the middle or to change it a little bit but it's very important that if we want to you know we recognize the splash awards whatever we stick on there but we also want like clients to recognize the splash awards and, and come to your agency or come to you and say hey look should our shouldn't our case be nominated for splash awards you know we want the media to pick up on the splash awards and start writing about it because we want to write, reach more people about the wonderful group of work that we're doing so we need to you know to contain ourselves um, and try um, to keep with whatever we've laid down in a brand book. Obviously, there's you know we're finding ways and thinking of ways for for expanding that and for all of you to contribute. Um, 
but this goes for the logo and colors and so forth. So this is all laid down, laid out in a brand book, what to use and what not to use. So that is with regards to the brand. We also talked about the guidelines because there were some challenges there. And I've picked two highlights. In this particular case, what do we do if a Splash Awards has already won in a particular re region or already won in a certain international Splash Awards? Because we, we, what we wanted to avoid is like one big agency come in, like a multinational or a bigger agency is also, also using Drupal, and start submitting their cases to the Splash Awards and start harvesting away all the wins, right? So if you won, you're gone. So that's, that's one of the rules changes that we did now. Obviously, you know, if we find ourselves that it's not workable, we need to find, you know, for a change or, or a fix to that. But this is something that we lay, we've laid out in the ground rules now. Also, um, we want Splash Awards to happen in conjunction with DrupalCon because then we can sort of, we have the broadest reach to also reach out to business people and clients and say, hey, shouldn't you be um, submitting your case to Splash Awards? And by the way, there's this wonderful thing happening. So, um, the event kit, it's online, it's on splashawards.org, it's on that page, all about like organizing your own, a link to the kit. It will lead you to a Google Drive folder that has two folders in itself, one with the branding and marketing resources, all the stuff that I just showed you, and the other one, um, and that's still work in progress with templates and organization resources, which has stuff like um, uh, rating templates, um, and standard emails that you can use to send out and stuff like that. So that's there. Um, if you go, the slides will be shared and you can find the URL, but if you go to splashwords.org, you'll find it real quick. Obviously, there's still some stuff that, um, that we would have liked doing or that we want to do, which is on the roadmap. Uh, the website, obviously, there are some, uh, some, some things that we want to do there, but also we've designed a marketing template for sending out emails, like three months prior emails, like, hey, Splash Awards is coming, to, hey, thank you for uh, submitting your case, and stuff like that, but it needs to be implemented still. Um, um, we started distributing the event kit. You know, this session is uh, part of that. Um, also online. We want to find means for everyone to contribute easily. Right now there's a contribute folder in that Google Drive place if you want to drop stuff or share stuff, but we need to find a way to do it consistently. Um, obviously, um, it wouldn't make much sense for, well, you know, people like myself or other people involved in marketing to put all the stuff in a code repository. I'm not sure if that's the most efficient way, but again, we're looking for ways for everyone to contribute um, and this is an important one. We're actually looking for ways to um, safe harbor the Splash Awards in a way that the brand is protected, but also that there's going to be a next Splash Awards. So we're talking to the Drupal Association about that, see if they're willing to somehow contain that Splash Awards and make sure that there, there's one happening in Minneapolis and sh make sure that they support whatever other regions uh, are willing to invest in the Splash Awards, but Anyway, that's, that's uh, stuff going on right now. And then finally, we did a call to, um, um, for everybody to support the initiative, especially local associations. There's four associations involved in setting up what I've just shown you, which is two, the two German associations, the Belgian, the fin Finnish association, and the Dutch association, and they all fronted 500 euros. We went just a little bit over that, but um, obviously there's some so there's more stuff that we want want to do. So um, for us, it's money well spent because it helps promote Drupal in our region, right? So if you're you are part of an association, um, and or if you are willing to tie our name to the splash board or help it further, there's ways to do that. So, and that is the update for now. Thank you very much. Any questions at this point? No? Okay, so we'll be here all week. We'll have Splash Awards tonight. If you submitted a case, uh, I wish you the best of luck. It's going to be very exciting. Um, I'm here all week, and if you have any questions, contact me or contact through splashawards.org. Thank you.
Good.